He was only nine years old when a piece of shrapnel from an exploding cannon killed his father. So he, young Prince James of the Stuart family, became King of Scotland, the third of his name. But in the year 1460, not only he and Bishop James Kennedy and the prince's mother, Queen Mary, wanted to rule, they began to play for the throne. Women in Scotland did not usually succeed too well in such battles. But Mary Geldern had it all worked out. This extraordinary lady owned almost half of the kingdom and could spend money on fighting and was also related to the Dukes of Burgundy, so intrigue was in her blood. When the Roses fought in England, the active Queen Mary agreed to shelter the Lancastrian losers. In return, Scotland acquired the fortress of Berwick, not a bad payment for hospitality. The Queen died three years later, two years later, died her main enemy Kennedy. The young king began to act on his own. On his birthday, he married the only daughter of the Danish king, Margaret. This marriage brought him the Orkney and Shetland Islands, but most importantly happiness. Margaret, beautiful and intelligent, but most importantly, embodied kindness and justice so different from all the women known to the king that he raved about her until Margaret's death. Afterwards, he even tried to canonize her. James immediately realized the importance of a permanent parliament. Surprisingly, but at that time, it was Scotland that became the most progressive kingdom on the continent. The parliament passed laws that reformed the judicial system, established trade. The king, on the other hand, was busy subduing the discontented. The mountain clans, traditionally too high-minded, submitted to James III. But things were more complicated with his own brothers. In his youth, the king had been predicted to die by a loved one. At that time in England, relatives of royal blood were at each other's throats. Therefore, no one was surprised that Jacob decided to strike a preemptive strike, accused the two brothers of witchcraft. The Earl of Mar was killed rather promptly. Duke Alexander Albany managed to escape to France. Relations between Edinburgh and Paris immediately became tense. Inside Scotland, too, tensions were growing. Many people did not like the king for his harshness, his laws, and unwillingness to support the centuries-old freedom of the barons. A rebellion broke out against James. The king was captured and locked up in his own Edinburgh castle. The Duke of Albany promptly made an alliance with the English. He thought they would help him take the throne. He would recognize the King of England as his suzerain. A shameful treaty, considering how many years the Scots had fought for their independence. However, Albany's actions were unlawful in the most unexpected place. The Scottish Parliament deemed his actions illegal. James was freed, a request made especially by Queen Margaret. She is said to have made delightful speeches in Parliament, for the only time in her life. For the rest of the time she was in her husband's shadow. The Duke of Albany fled again, and soon died in a foreign land. Need it be said that his family on the island did not mourn him? The king had one, and he did not expect another betrayal, and from the man closest to him. But his son, 15-year-old James, was tempted by the prospect of an early accession to the throne, and he rebelled. King James III was killed at the Battle of Sauchyburn. Walter Scott suggested that the Scottish monarch was treacherously stabbed by a mercenary dressed as a monk. But more likely, the king was stabbed in a fight. This is a man used to facing his enemies. The sorcerer's prophecy has come true. It happens. If you like it, subscribe, like it, and thank you for your comments.